Meeting the growing demand for mobility without relying on fossil fuels is really one of the main challenges that we're facing. And we have to do this globally and for the whole transportation sector, not just cars. For this goal and for this challenge, discovering, designing, developing new materials is really critical. Toyota depends upon new materials for all sorts of different purposes. Uh, you think of catalytic converters, fuel cells, the materials within those make them either efficient and useful or not. Being able to find the best materials is absolutely essential. I, I, I would argue that the world right now has been focusing on the best that they've discovered to date, not necessarily the best for a given application. So what we're poised to do through the collaboration with Toyota is to begin to look at the vast parameter set possible in terms of materials discovery, collect data from that, and then empower machine learning and AI algorithms to allow us to objectively search the materials genome and find the best materials for a given need. Before we were using machine learning, all of our materials design was trial and error. So we had to synthesize one material and then characterize it and then synthesize the next one and characterize that and hope that any one of those would give us properties of interest, but we couldn't tell ahead of time. Traditionally, we've pursued new ideas by human intuition. The things that scientists think might be interesting, they have some idea that they want to try out. By the kind of technologies that we're leveraging here at Northwestern University, it allows us to go beyond that, because not only can we use our intuition, but now we have the possibility of looking at a vast number of things that would not be possible otherwise. And that helps us look for things that we might not have thought of. Every element has its unique properties and is different from every other element. And combinations of elements will interact with each other. Their electronic structure is influenced by the atoms around it. So depending on what they are, you can end up with a material that has vastly different properties. It can form different crystal structures. It'll have different surfaces, different electronic structures. And so there's a lot of space that has never been explored as to what the properties of these materials might be. So the mega libraries are, are really a product of, of the modern age of nanotechnology. We invented a whole series of what we call nano printers here. Think of a, a printer, it's got a, a print head that has 100,000 or more pyramidal tips. Those can be coated with chemicals, gradients of chemicals, and then brought down and those materials can be deposited onto a chip of interest. But being able to control particle size and shape on the nanoscale within the context of a mega library is very important because many of the active catalysts that go into fuel cells, that go into catalytic converters, that are used for catalyzing all of the important processes out there are nanomaterials. One nanometer uh, would be Take a dime, slice it on edge a thousand times. Take one of those pieces, slice it another thousand times on edge. That's one nanometer thick. Nanoparticles uh, have very unique properties in terms of their catalytic activity. They make for good catalysts because they have a high surface area to volume ratio because they're so small. So ideally, when we make nanoparticles, we're able to make particles that have a lot of available surface for catalyzing reactions and use less of a valuable material like platinum, for example, that goes into a fuel cell. So the more active a catalyst is, the more power it will produce for less fuel. So it basically means the fuel cell will be more efficient. We're in a, in a really unique position to uh, take this all the way, to think about how we not only discover materials in a new way, how we create this platform, but ultimately how we deploy this platform in a company like Toyota to really make a difference in their business and figuring out how we can strengthen the relationships between the company researchers, the company business folks and the people on the ground at the university doing the discovery work would be really quite powerful because it would allow us to streamline how we go from this called fundamental discovery process to real applications that can make a difference in Toyota and, and around the world. So research partnerships between universities and, uh, and organizations like Toyota are critical because universities have the freedom to explore and have the scientific curiosity to really drive forward the frontier of human knowledge. And what we can bring to the university partnership is a concern about making the best technology we'd like. So where those two things intersect, where the interest in providing technology for society and where the frontiers of human knowledge are, uh, that's really where we can come together and do something um, really valuable. What's exciting is we don't know what the limits are. We don't know what the best performing devices and technologies that we can make can be. And so there's always this idea that there's something better out there if we just look in the right place. And so it might be that we look for a long time and never find it, but the possibility that we might is what's exciting.